The human body has 11 organ systems. Skin, bones, muscle and tendons, brain and company, heart and company, digestive, respiratory, hormone glands, spleen and lymph nodes, little piss boy, and the sex-specific reproductive system. These lines can be a bit fuzzy, and the organ systems interact with each other quite a lot, but 11 is the magic number such that we can reasonably place every organ in the human body into one of a group of organs that share a common purpose. What makes starfish so different is that they have closer to four. This video is going to be primarily concerned with the largest one, which frustratingly is referred to alternatingly as the hemal system and the water vascular system. The most obvious purpose of the hemal system, and the one it's named after, is the circulatory system's job to transport oxygenated fluid throughout the body. To describe how it does that, let's talk about the morphology, big word, of the axial complex, the organ commanding the process. We start here with the madreporic plate. This area is a surface covered with tiny openings that allow for water to flow in and out of the system. Of course, an opening isn't much use if you can't close it, so it functions like a trapdoor. The plate lies flush with the skin, which I've included here for scale, and aesthetics. When drawn in, the water rushes into the madreporic ampulla, or axial coelum. Quick reminder of what a coelom is, it's an empty cavity within the body, full of fluid. Most coelomates have only one or two, but the starfish has three on each side, or at least it did in development. As an adult, most of these have devoted themselves to making up the axial complex. The left axoceal becomes this cavity. Meanwhile, the left hydroceal becomes the hemal ring, a giant ring encircling the digestive tract that relays water to the arm. The madreporic ampulla extends an olive branch to the hemal ring, called the stone canal. Water is moved through the stone canal by the flexing of the axial organ. The axial organ is a giant muscle originally attaching the skin to the digestive tract, now anchored to the axial complex by being embedded in the dorsal sac, which evolved from the right axoceal. The right hydroceal kind of died. The top half is called the head process, and the bottom half is called the pulsating vessel. So, now that water's in the hemal ring, where does it go? Well, that's where the two coelums we left alone come in. A lot of the water gets shunted into the somatoceal, which has a bunch of crisscrossing tubes that connect them to all of the other cells. Eventually, that water finds its way back to the hemal ring and gets discharged from the body. And another thing, waste products from the cells enter the water when the oxygen is leaving, and that water, too, is eventually pumped out of the body. So the hemal system is also the urinary system, and I guess it's also the respiratory system, too. And also it's used for something called the ambulacral system. Water from the hemal ring is sent out into the arms, where it can be used for suction action. When a sucker is placed up against something and water is sucked out, it creates a vacuum seal, and water needs to be injected back in to release the object. One more function. The ring has these guys attached to it, Tiedemann's body and the Pullian vesicles. These guys more or less produce and store brown bodies, which fight infection. Is there anything the hemal system can't do? Well, let's go over the remaining system. Nothing's going to take away skin, same for muscles. The nervous system has no center and is just a ring of nerves with extensions going down into the arms. The digestive system has its mouth here and anus over here. It's not plugged into the system, though. It has its own ring extending into the pyloric cecum stomach intestines, which are attached to the stomach, but function like the intestines. Starfish don't have pituitary glands, but the gonadotrophs making them up are part of the nervous system. Finally, the reproductive system consists of the gonads. They're in the arms, which of course means that they need their own relay ring, the aboral or genital cela. Starfish reproduce through spawning, where millions of males and millions of females spray out eggs and sperm and hope they find each other, but they don't use the madreporic plate. They leach their gametes straight into the water through gonopores, holes connecting the gonads to outside, but they still need a muscle to pump them. And guess which muscle it is? It's the axial organ! Five in one! And of course, the skeletal system, an endoskeleton made up of tiny quartz plates and a crystal lattice. It's unconnected to the hemal system. But it's not the only skeleton a starfish has. Imagine in your head a bone. You could break it. It might take some effort, but you could. But now imagine a bag of water. You gonna break that? How you gonna break it? It's water. That doesn't sound like that would be how it works, but that's exactly how it works. This is called a hydrostatic skeleton, and it's the sixth purpose of a starfish's water vascular system.